Hello everyone. Today, we embark on a journey through the fascinating history of genetics and molecular biology. As we explore the code of life, we will witness the remarkable discoveries that have shaped our understanding of these two major subfields of biology. Let's preview the key milestones we'll be exploring. Our journey begins with the early ideas of heredity, examining the theories of the ancient Greeks. Moving to 1865, we'll delve into Mendel's groundbreaking experiments with pea plants and his laws that laid the foundation of modern genetics. Fast forward to 1926, we'll explore Morgan's experiments with fruit flies and his theory of the gene. In 1941, Beadle and Tatum proposed the one gene, one enzyme hypothesis, unveiling the role of genes. In 1944, Avery identified DNA as the genetic material. We'll then examine the discovery of the double helix structure of DNA by Watson and Crick in 1953. Transitioning to 1961, we'll explore the operon model by Jacob and Monod, unraveling gene regulation in bacteria. The 1960s was also a time of deciphering the genetic code, led by Nienberg and Mattery. In 1973, we meet Cohen and Boyer's development of recombinant DNA technology. We also visit 1983 when Mullis invented the PCR method for DNA amplification. Finally, in 2003, the collaborative effort of the Human Genome Project mapped the entire human genome. Wrapping up our journey, we'll reflect on the ongoing impact of genetics and molecular biology on science and society. Let's begin! Before delving into the specifics, let's understand why genetics and molecular biology are so crucial. These fields have transformed our world, influencing medicine, agriculture, and various scientific disciplines. The journey to unravel the genetic code is not merely a scientific pursuit but a quest to decode life itself. Our journey into the history of genetics starts by exploring the early concepts of heredity. The Greeks, notably Aristotle, proposed the idea of a blending inheritance. According to this concept, Hereditary factors from both parents blended together in a manner similar to how different paints on a palette blend to create a new color. This theory implied that the traits of offspring would be a mixture of those of their parents. The curiosity of these ancient civilizations about the transmission of traits set the stage for more systematic investigations. That would unfold centuries later. Fast forward to the 19th century, where we encounter Gregor Mendel and the emergence of genetics. His ideas are summarized in his 1865 book Experiments on Plant Hybridization, or in German, Versuche über Pflanzenhybriden. Mendel analyzed the results of experiments on the plant hybridization of peas, and found that parental traits are passed to the progeny in the form of particles, or hereditary factors. Although Mendel's discovery went unnoticed at the time, it was later rediscovered by several scientists around the 1900s. His main principles of inheritance are now referred to as Mendel's laws. Mendel's laws include the law of dominance, the law of segregation, and the law of independent assortment. His experiments with pea plants and his laws laid the foundation for our understanding of heredity, setting the stage for the field of genetics to blossom in the 20th century. The table on the right shows a Punnett square for one of Mendel's pea plant experiments, illustrating the self-fertilization of the F1 generation. In the early 20th century, Thomas Hunt Morgan's fruit fly experiments provided evidence for the chromosomal theory of inheritance. Chromosomes were identified as the carriers of genetic information, revolutionizing our understanding of heredity. The image on the right shows his 1926 book, The Theory of the Gene. Morgan discovered that each gene resides in a specific location on the chromosome and completed the genetic map of fruit flies. Since then, genetics has greatly advanced, with fruit fly genes being studied in detail. The image on the left displays the fruit fly, or Drosophila melanogaster, while the one on the right depicts the genetic linkage map of a fruit fly. In the 1940s, George Beadle and Edward Tatum proposed the groundbreaking one gene, one enzymes hypothesis. Beadle and Tatum argued that each gene contains information for the synthesis of a specific enzyme. In 1941, Beadle and Tatum conducted an experiment on amino acid synthesis in Neurospora crassa, a type of red bread mold. 
they confirmed that genes determine the production of specific enzymes. This research provided the initial evidence that genes enable enzymes to synthesize, catalyzing specific chemical reactions. Their work on Neurospora crassa connected genes to specific enzymatic functions, advancing our understanding of genetic expression. The image displays Neurospora crassa. Enter the mid-20th century, a pivotal time in genetics. Frederick Griffith's experiment paved the way for Oswald Avery's identification of DNA as the carrier of genetic information. In 1928, Griffith observed the transformation of bacteria through an experiment on Streptococcus pneumoniae. Transformation is a phenomenon in which the genetic traits of a cell or organism are changed by exogenous genetic materials. The image on the right displays Streptococcus pneumoniae, a major cause of pneumonia. In 1944, Avery conducted follow-up experiments and research on the transformation of S. pneumoniae using several degradative enzymes. They include proteases that degrade proteins, ribonucleases that degrade RNA, and deoxyribonucleases that degrade DNA. Through his experiments, Avery demonstrated that DNA is the substance that causes transformation, namely, the genetic material. The early 1950s witnessed a pivotal moment with James Watson and Francis Crick's discovery of the structure of DNA. Two crucial contributions from Erwin Chargaff and Rosalind Franklin played key roles in this groundbreaking revelation. Chargaff revealed the characteristics of DNA base composition. His rules state that the amount of aid 9 equals that of thymine, and the amount of guanine equals that of cytosine. Hence, the amount of purine bases equals that of pyrimidine bases. Franklin took X-ray diffraction images of DNA. This diffraction image on the right was obtained by X-raying a DNA fiber and later named Photo 51. Watson and Crick combined Chargaff and Franklin's findings and discovered the double helix structure of DNA. They published their model in Nature in 1953. Since then, research on DNA has progressed and molecular biology has developed rapidly. Transitioning to the 1960s, we encounter the operon model proposed by Francois Jacob and Jacques Monod. An operon is the unit of regulation of gene expression that contains a single promoter and several genes. It is found in prokaryotes, and there are several other types, including the lac operon or lactose operon. In 1961, Jacob and Monod unveiled the process regulating gene expression in Escherichia coli. E. coli is a type of bacteria, some strains of which can cause food poisoning. The genes that encode the three enzymes needed to process lactose are located next to each other under one promoter on the chromosome, and are transcribed together as one mRNA. The lactose operon is composed of the genes for the three enzymes required to process lactose as well as the promoter and the operator that control the gene's expression. The image on the right illustrates the mechanism of the lac operon controlling gene expression in E. coli. In the 1960s, the work of Marshall Nienberg and Heinrich Mattery revolutionized our understanding of the genetic code, unveiling the secrets of life itself. An amino acid is specified by three consecutive bases, known as a genetic code. Nienberg and Mattery decoded the genetic code using artificially synthesized RNA. In their 1961 experiment, a synthetic mRNA composed solely of uracil led to the synthesis of a polypeptide containing only one type of amino acid, phenylalanine. Similarly, a polypeptide containing only lysine was synthesized from a synthetic mRNA composed solely of AID9. This discovery marked the first crack in the genetic code, revealing that a specific sequence of three nucleotides, known as a codon, corresponded to a particular amino acid. Thus, they explained the relationship between the nucleotide sequence and the amino acid sequence of the protein. The image displays a codon table. Nienberg and Mattery's pioneering efforts laid the foundation for subsequent breakthroughs, advancing our understanding of genetics evolution, and even contributing to the development of genetic engineering. The 1970s brought us into the era of genetic engineering with Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer's development of recombinant DNA technology. Cohen and Boyer envisioned that restriction enzymes, plasmids, and DNA ligases could be used to insert a desired gene into the DNA of another organism. 
Restriction enzymes are enzymes that can recognize and cut specific nucleic acid sequences of DNA. They turned their idea into reality and developed gene recombination technology in 1973. This innovation opened doors to genetic modification, paving the way for advancements in biotechnology. The diagram illustrates how recombinant DNA technology enables us to produce human insulin from transgenic microbes. First, the human insulin gene is inserted into a bacterial plasmid. Then, the recombinant DNA plasmid transforms bacteria, giving them the ability to produce the insulin protein. Fast forward to 1983, where PCR, invented by Carrie Mullis, stands as a revolutionary technique in the field of molecular biology. Mullis believed that DNA could be replicated in vitro as long as the materials required for DNA replication were well equipped. He soon developed the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, which is a technology that amplifies DNA in a short time. The polymerase chain reaction has transformed the landscape of molecular biology and diagnostics, enabling scientists to amplify and analyze DNA with unprecedented precision and efficiency. PCR now provides powerful tools for disease diagnosis and forensic analysis, with its impact being both profound and far-reaching. The image on the right shows a scientist placing a strip of eight PCR tubes into a thermal cycler. In the 1990s, the Human Genome Project emerged as an international collaboration to map and sequence the human genome. A genome is the entire genetic information of an organism, consisting of the complete DNA sequence. The Human Genome Project was successfully completed in 2003, unveiling the nucleic acid sequence of the entire human genome. This achievement laid the foundation for research on gene function and the analysis of biogenetic information. The image shows a part of a schematic karyogram of a human. It provides an overview of a subset of the human genome, with numbered chromosome pairs. In conclusion, we've embarked on a remarkable journey through the history of genetics and molecular biology. From ancient theories to the Human Genome Project, these fields have transformed our understanding of life. As we move forward, the impact of genetics on science, medicine, and society remains profound. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I'd be happy to address any questions you may have in the comments below. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.